Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss, and in this video we are continuing our series on building a Slack bot in the Go programming language. In the last video we wrote a simple Go program to send a message to a Slack channel. In this video we're going to write a similar program, but we're going to expand the capabilities a little bit to uh, add some logic for processing command line arguments, and then we're also going to format uh, a little bit more complex of a message to our Slack channel using uh, what's called the Blocks UI framework provided by Slack. Once we've written this program, the next step will be to write a Jenkins uh, pipeline script that uh, calls this Go program inside of a Jenkins uh, pipeline job. And we'll write the Jenkins pipeline script and configure the pipeline job in the following videos. If you're enjoying this series, please consider throwing a like on the videos and subscribing to the channel for more series like this. With that, go ahead and grab a coffee if you haven't already, and let's get started. So one thing I wanted to address before we start writing uh, the program is an updated message format. So in the first video, I, I demonstrated what the end product should look like, and that message uh, is here. This is how that the original message was formatted. We had the pretext and then you know the Jenkins build details. Uh, and in the program that we're about to write, the formatting has changed a little bit. Uh, this is what our message is going to look like now. After we write the this program, we'll have uh, our messages in bold. We'll have some header text here, uh, divider, and then the same information that we had up here, the, uh, the job name, the build number, the build result, and the build URL. And the reason for updating the formatting uh, like this is uh, because we're going to be using uh, a different uh, API uh, in this video to write this message than we did in the previous video. So in the previous video, um, the API that we utilize, it's a legacy uh, API for sending messages. And the one that we're going to be uh, using uh, in this video is what Slack uh, advises you to use uh, in the future because the legacy API will be uh, deprecated at some point. Uh, and using the new API couldn't quite get the formatting exactly uh, how, how we have it here, um, but I tried to rep replicate it a little bit more, uh, or I tried to replicate it as closely as possible. So I just wanted to preface the video with that um, before we actually start writing the program so that when you do see uh, this uh, this updated message format, uh, you're not uh, you know taken by surprise that it's not it doesn't match what we saw in the first video. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my uh, editor here, and we'll start writing the program. I've called the program Slack-notification.go, and the first thing I want to do is uh, define package main, and then I'm going to import our dependencies. First dependency is it's uh, the first dependency is FMT, and the second one is uh, OS. So we're importing OS so that we can process command line arguments for this program. And then the last import is just going to be the uh, Slack Go library. So that's just going to be github.com slash Slack Go slash Slack. Okay, and that's really all we need. Now let's go ahead and uh, define a main function. And inside the main function, we're going to uh, immediately start processing command line arguments. The command line arguments that we're going to pass in is going to be the uh, Jenkins build URL, the build result, the build number, and then the job name. And the Jenkins pipeline script that we're going to write is going to pass those arguments in uh, from the Jenkins environment variables into the program so that uh, this program has all of the necessary data to format and send uh, the message that we want to send. So I'm going to define an arguments variable and set it to the program arguments. So this is taking all of the arguments following the, the path of the program itself. So one colon everything after the the first index of the program arguments. And then let's go ahead and print our arguments just to verify uh, what the arguments are. Now I'm going to create a new instance of a client connection with the Slack API. So I'm going to define a variable called API 
and then uh, call slack.new. And then like in the previous video, we're going to get the uh, Slackbot user token from uh, our, our system environment variables. And I've called mine Slackbot, uh, Slack undersc underscore bot underscore token. Okay. And after we have an instance of a, of a client connection to the API, uh, let's start parsing our uh, command line arguments out into the information that we want to pack into a message and send to Slack. So the first one is going to be a pretext or, or a header text, I guess. And the pretext is just going to be kind of like an introductory message uh, preceding the, the Jenkins build details. And it's uh, this API accepts markdown formatting. Uh, so I am going to specify asterisks before the the actual message so that it actually renders in, in markdown format uh, when the message is sent. So this is going to be a bold string. So we're just going to say hello, uh, your Jenkins build has finished. Okay. And then uh, for the uh, the next variable, let's define the Jenkins URL. Let's parse the Jenkins URL out of the command line arguments. And um, we'll say that the Jenkins URL is going to be the first argument to the program. So, so the Jenkins build URL should be the first argument to the program. And we'll form a string here. We'll say build URL. plus args, and then the first argument. I'm not doing like input validation here. I, I'm assuming that you know, you're capable of adding input validation to this program. So this is just gonna be the bare bones. The next argument is gonna be the build result. Uh, so let's define a build result variable and uh, we'll make it uh, bold using uh, markdown formatting. And after the build result, we'll define the build number as the third argument. And after the build number, the final argument is going to be the, the Jenkins job name. So I'm just gonna say job name here. And that should be all of the that should be all of the arguments that we need to pass into the program. And these are the arguments that the Jenkins pipeline script is going to pass into this program when it invokes it. The next thing that I want to do is just add some logic around the result of the build. So if the build passes, I want a check mark uh, next to the message, the 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 result message. And if it fails, I want the red X. Um, emoji added next to the failed result. So let's add a little bit of logic to check the build result. So if build result equals uh, success, it's going to be in all caps. And remember that success, I'm adding the asterisks here because we're uh, surrounding the result in asterisks up here. Okay. So if the build result is equal to success, then the build result equals build result plus white check mark. Okay, so this will put the that green uh, check mark next to the build result string. And if uh, if, if it's anything other than success, then we'll put uh, the red X. So build result 
equals build result plus x. Okay. So that just kind of spices up the formatting of our of our message a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to tell when you look at the message whether or not the job passed or failed. Now we're at a point where we need to start uh, generating the necessary data structures to format a message and send that message to the Slack API. And remember that we're using the Blocks UI framework uh, provided by Slack to do so, and this Slack Go client library does support the, uh, the Blocks UI framework. And before we start writing those uh, data structures, I want to just give a brief overview of what a block is. And uh, to do that, I'm actually gonna read just directly from the, the Slack documentation. Um, and I'll, I'll also provide a link to the block, uh, the block kit UI framework uh, documentation in the video description below. So according to the Slack uh, documentation, blocks are visual components that can be stacked and arranged to create app layouts. And they can be interactive. It could be uh, more than text. It could include images, files, um, it could include buttons, so it can be interactive, like uh, for uh, polling or um, doing other automation tasks, like a button click might also trigger some other portion of the Slackbot code to, to perform another activity. So when you're using the block UI framework, you first need to generate the blocks that you, that, that you want visualized on the, on the message, and then you pass those blocks into a call uh, to the, the API for sending a message. So now that we have a high level understanding of what blocks are, let's go ahead and start uh, generating uh, the blocks that we want to send in our message. So the first uh, block that I want to define is the divider block. So if we uh, look at back at the message, the divider block is going to generate this divider between the header text, uh, or the pretext rather, and the rest of the message. So I'm gonna go ahead and define a new divider block. And to do so, I'm just going to generate, um, define a new variable and we'll call it uh, divider section uh, one. And then we'll call the Slack Go um, client libraries method for generating a new divider block. So new divider block. Now, after defining the divider block, uh, let's concatenate some of the strings that we parsed out of the command line arguments into a single variable called Jenkins build details. So I'm gonna define uh, a variable called Jenkins build details. And it's gonna consist of first the job name followed by the build number. And we're gonna preface the build number with a uh, um, uh, the pound symbol and then we have the build number we'll separate that out using a hyphen uh, from the build result okay let's here and after that we'll do a new line so we'll separate out the job name, build number, build result um, from the Jenkins URL. So the Jenkins URL will be on a new line directly below uh, this information. Okay. And uh, the next thing that we want to create is a is what's called a text block object. So we're going to create a text block object that holds our, our pretext uh, variable. And we'll call it pretext field. And we'll call the uh, function new text block object, which will return a pointer to a text block object. And it takes as input the, um, the text type, which in this case is going to be uh, markdown. And then we pass in the actual text that we want. So this is going to be the pretext plus new line, new line, 
and then the last two arguments are going to be false. After defining uh, the pretext field and getting a new text block object for uh, this text up here, we're going to also generate a new uh, text block object for the Jenkins build uh, details variable. So let's call it Jenkins build details field. And again, we'll call new text block object and it'll be marked down again. And in this case, we're going to include the Jenkins build details variable and last two arguments are going to be false. So the next step is to include these text block objects in what's called a section block. And uh, according to the documentation from Slack, a section block is one of the most flexible blocks available. It can be used as a simple text block in combination with text fields or side by side with any of the available block elements. And a block element could be something like a file or an image um, or, or a button. So it's a very flexible type of uh, block. And the first section that we're gonna define is gonna be for the Jenkins build details. Uh, so we'll call it Jenkins build uh, details section. And we'll invoke the uh, new section block function. And we'll pass in the Jenkins build details field. And then the next two arguments are going to be nil. Uh, this is going to be if you want to pass in a, an array of text block object pointers. Uh, but in this case, we just have a single uh, te text block object that we're passing in. And the next one, the next section that we're going to define is the pretext um, section. So we'll do new section block and we'll pass in the pretext field here. Okay. Now, once we have those uh, section blocks, we can begin generating a message and we'll call it uh, message. And then we're going to call message option blocks. And message option blocks is going to uh, take it as input our uh, section blocks. So the first one is going to be pretext uh, section. Then we're going to add our divider. So the divider section one. And then we're going to add the Jenkins build details section. Okay. And once we have the message, we can then make a call to uh, our client connection and we can use the send message function to pass that message to Jenkins. So uh, the send message uh, function returns the channel as well as a timestamp of the message and um, one other argument, but we're gonna leave those, uh, those blanks. So I'm gonna do underscore here and then uh, error. So we do wanna check if there's uh, an error And then we'll make a call to api.sendMessage. And we can either specify a channel ID or a user ID. We're sending this to the general channel, so I'm gonna specify that channel ID. And uh, that's C01, A, C, E, C, okay. And remember, I'm getting the channel ID uh, from the URL. So if you uh, remember from the previous video, I got the, the channel ID from the end of the URL when I'm inside of the channel that I wanna send a message to. Okay, so actually I'm just gonna copy this here. I think I had it correct, yeah I did. Okay, and then the second argument is gonna be our message. All right, and after we send our message, we're gonna check uh, our error. 
So if error is not equal to nil, then let's print the error out to the console, uh, to the screen. Okay. And return. Okay. And that should be about it. That's uh, that's all we need to to send our message. So let's go ahead and run the program and see if it works uh, as expected. So I'm going to go to the terminal, and I'm in the directory of uh, the Go program, and I'm going to say go run Slack notification go, and then remember the order of our arguments up here. Uh, we have the Jenkins URL as the first argument. So here we'll just put like HTTP localhost for now, just to make sure that we can test the program. And uh, the second argument is gonna be the build result. We'll say it's a success. The third ar argument is going to be the build number. So let's just put a, a build number there. And then the job name is going to be the final argument. So we'll call it a test job. All right, that looks good. So let's go ahead and run it. And uh, it did print out the arguments to the console um, like we put up here. So let's go to Slack and see if it sent the message. And it looks like it did. So it just sent the message and we have it formatted correctly. So we have the bold uh, pretext or header text up here, our divider, and then we have the job name, the build number, the result along with the check mark and the uh, build URL is also included. And just for just to test the, the failure as well, um, let's go ahead and rerun it, but with failed. Okay, and now we get the, the red X, okay, the red X uh, emoji. So even though we, we've expanded the functionality of the program to process you know, the command line arguments, and utilize the Blocks UI framework. It's still a pretty uh, straightforward uh, program and it's not too difficult to write. So our next step after, uh, after writing this program, like I said before, is going to be writing a Jenkins pipeline script. And the Jenkins pipeline script is gonna execute this program in Jenkins and pass in the, these uh, variables, the Jenkins URL, the result, the, num the build number, and the job name into the program so that it can uh, send uh, send a message to Slack automatically, and it's going to be configured as a post build action inside of the inside of the pipeline script. But we'll write that Jenkins pipeline script in the next video. And remember that the code that we write uh, that we've written in this video is available in a GitHub repo that I've linked in the video uh, description below. If you like this video, please consider throwing a like on it and subscribing to the channel for more series like this. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. Thanks for watching.